Do you have foot and ankle pain located here? Here's what you can do about it. Most often, this is Achilles tendinopathy, which can be split into mid-substance and insertional. People with Achilles tendinopathy experience pain walking, with stairs, jumping, and running. The Achilles tendon connects the calf muscles to the back of the heel bone, and it functions to absorb and transmit force when placing weight through the leg. This is most common in athletes, but it can show up in anyone. So what's causing it and why does it happen? Historically, the cause of pain was thought to be due to inflammation. You probably know the term tendonitis. The itis ending denotes inflammation, but we no longer use it. We learned the real issue is tendon degeneration, so think weakening. For this reason, we now call it tendonopathy rather than itis. Looking at the tendon under a microscope, we see holes in the tendon where parts have degenerated. That sounds scary, but we also see more total tendon tissue. The body compensates by making more tendon than a person without the condition has. Your big question right now is why did this happen? We can loosely divide people up into three different groups. Group one is the person who did too much too soon. So someone who increased their activity level faster than their body could adapt to it. For example, a runner who went from running two miles a day to suddenly 10, or the inactive person who just started running or working out regularly. Group two is the person who chronically does too much and does not give their tendon enough rest to adequately recover, such as a high volume distance runner who never takes a day off. Group three is the sedentary person. The main point is with age, our body slowly loses the ability to handle physical demand. If we remain active, that decline happens slowly, but if we are inactive, it happens much faster. If sedentary, we eventually reach a point where the tendon can no longer handle the loads it previously could because we are not challenging it to maintain that ability. Early on, that loss is confined to high level activities like running or jumping. Over time, it includes basic tasks like walking, which is why we can develop the condition and pain with even seemingly basic basic tasks and activities. A final note is our overall health also plays a role. We know poor sleep, diet, obesity, smoking, diabetes, etc. make us more susceptible to this problem regardless of which group we fall. How long will it take for you to recover? We lack studies answering that for this condition, but we can extrapolate from other tendon disorders. Short answer is longer than you think. Patients frequently expect to improve in a few days or weeks. Some get lucky, but most don't. Per the research, you should expect recovery to take multiple months and possibly around one year. Pain will not remain as bad as it currently is for that duration though. Most improvement happens the first three to six months. Here's how it may look. Month four of recovery, you are working out, are not majorly limited at work, and can do your hobbies, but may not be able to go 100% in the gym or go the whole day at work without pain. Past here, we continue to improve, but it's slower and less obvious. Improvement is easy to to notice early on when going from being unable to work out to working out again, but less obvious the final 10% going from 90 to 100%. You won't notice going from pain starting at mile two to pain not happening until mile 2.2. You are still getting better though, but the rate slows to where you will no longer notice a difference on a weekly or even a monthly basis. You'll only notice once you can finally do that last little bit that currently you cannot. Big message, your recovery will take long longer than you expect. Primary treatment for Achilles tendinopathy is physical therapy. Let's explain why. Problem is, our tendon can only currently tolerate this level of force and load, but we are placing this amount on it with our life and activities. Hence, we wind up having pain. Initially, we scale back what we're doing, i.e. running less, to bring load down to this level, around or below what the tendon can take to get pain under control. Then we gradually ramp up our activity and add in physical therapy exercises to progressively build up how much the tendon can tolerate before we get pain, eventually getting to this level, where it can handle more load than we were previously placing upon it, at which point we can return to our prior level of activity with less or no pain. We accomplish this through a calf strengthening program. Let's talk through from easiest to hardest exercise. If we have a very high level of pain, then we start here. For the left, we exert as much force as able before hitting a three out of 10 pain level, holding for a few seconds, relaxing, and repeating. When these exercises become easy, we move on to the exercise on the left. When that's easy, then the one on the right. Here's our next two progressions. Left is again easier. Difficulty can be further progressed 
adding weights into the hands. Shown here is the set, repetition, and difficulty scheme I would aim for with these exercises. Which one should you begin with? There is no one size fits all. It depends what your body can tolerate. We choose the hardest option we can perform abiding by these guidelines, particularly the pain level. It takes trial and error, so I would start on the easier side. We want to build up to the hardest option possible while keeping pain below a three to four out of 10, both during exercise performance and the day after. When we can consistently do these sets slash reps, keeping pain under three to four out of 10, it may be appropriate to move to the next level. If we can do the new level with pain under that three to four, then the new level is appropriate. If not, it's too much. Let's chat equipment and its role in Achilles tendinopathy. Three items frequently come up, none of which need to be used. They're all entirely optional. First is a heel lift. This is placed in the back of your shoe to put your foot into more plantar flexion or toes pointed position. Doing so reduces stretch on the Achilles, meaning less stress and strain on the tendon. Lift thickness can be adjusted. Normally it's decreased every one to two weeks as tolerated, eventually building back to not needing the lift. Second item is orthotics. Research does not support these being effective for Achilles tendinopathy, but some people still want them. In that case, I would recommend cheap off the shelf versions from Walgreens, CVS, etc. Research in other conditions shows these are just as effective as expensive custom orthotics. So don't waste your money on the custom ones. Third is shoe wear. There's a lot of debate here and a lot of marketing to confuse you. Research is mixed, so I take a big picture view. Thick heel slash maximalist shoes cause us to land more on our heel, which places more force on the knees and hips. Thin heel slash minimalist shoes cause us to land more on our toes, which places more force on the ankle and Achilles. My big picture recommendation is if we currently use thin minimalist shoes and really want to change something, I would opt for maximalist thick heel shoes instead while we recover. It will likely shift our running form and shift load away from the sensitive Achilles. What about medications? Unfortunately, there's no medication that can cure this. Their role is only to manage symptoms, not treat the condition. Ideally, we don't use medication at all. Our options are limited to NSAIDs like ibuprofen, naproxen, etc. Alternatively, we can use acetaminophen, which you probably know as Tylenol, or a combination of both. Preferences for and SEDs, but some people cannot take them. Those with kidney, heart, blood pressure, or stomach bleed issues are typically recommended not to. Those individuals may be able to use topical lotion-like formulations, but you have to speak to your physician. As for dose and duration, recommendation is to use the lowest possible dose for the shortest possible time. Ideally, use is limited to when symptoms are unusually bad or we have a special event. Example one, we recently overdid it and flared our symptoms. Medication can be used here temporarily to help us function in our daily life while our pain returns back to normal. Example two, we have a vacation and we'll be more active than usual. Medication can be used before and during that spike in activity to help keep us moving and enjoying the trip. However, we do not take it weeks on end when at home sitting in our chair with baseline tolerable symptoms. What about injections? We have a few options, most well known as a steroid. Others include regenerative medicine like PRP, prolotherapy, etc. Steroid injections are most common, but we lack research on their effectiveness for Achilles tendinopathy specifically and hesitate to use them as the steroid increases risk of a full tear or a rupture from the bone, which would likely require surgery to fix. But are they effective? Research in other tendinopathies finds those who get the injection recover, i.e. pain improves, faster the first few weeks or months compared to those who do not get the injection. However, long term, both groups groups recover to the same extent, meaning those who get it feel better at month three, but by month six or eight, both groups are doing the same, which raises the question of should you get one? My answer is very rarely. It may be appropriate for a manual labor in desperate need of a quick recovery because they're going to lose their livelihood if they can't go back to work right away. But few people are in that situation. For most, the risk of rupture and surgery and many months of PT after surgery is not worth the short-term benefit. What about regenerative medicine, ERP, prolotherapy, etc.? Honestly, not a lot better. These do not have the rupture risk, but are newer and have less evidence demonstrating effectiveness and tend to be really expensive. So you can get them without worrying, but we can't say 
confidently that it'll help. It's a gamble. Big takeaway, injections are unlikely to cure your problem. Finally, let's chat about surgery. It can be an option, but it's a last resort and very rarely performed. To qualify, you typically need to undergo six to 12 months of conservative care, i.e. physical therapy, without recovering. What they do in surgery depends on your individual case and anatomy. It may involve removing bony protrusions thought to contribute. It may involve cutting out degenerated parts of tendon, and it may involve washing debris out of the joint. Overall, we don't have much research on surgery for this, so we also cannot confidently say it will work. Hopefully it helps, but no guarantees. Overall, that is how we manage Achilles tendinopathy. I hope it helped and good luck with your recovery.